right, 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 right. So, David Seven Science Theater, today we've come to talk about speech disorders. <clears throat> speech has a lot of disorders in the body. While we see clinically, there are several disorders about speech. And uh, the V7 Science Theater at gmail.com. That's how you can contact us for any question for, for more clarification. But I know everything is clear and self explanatory here. Right. So, yeah. Right, 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 right. So, that is the V7. Yeah, you can like, you subscribe, and share for more, subscribe for more and better videos. To share for other students to also enjoy the science here. Uh, right, right. So the first disorder is dysarthria. Dysarthria, dysarthria, I want to talk about dysarthria. It's a disorder of speech in which articulation of the words is impaired. But the comprehension of spoken words or written speech is not affected. Yeah, it may be due to paresis or in coordination of muscles involved in production of speech. I seen in lesions of the pyramidal tracts, cranial nerves, cerebellum, or basal ganglia. So when these four four structures are affected, oh we have lesions of the pyramidal tracts, yes, cranial nerves, cerebellum. Obeso ganglia. It means we shall have impaired production of speech. The muscles will be incoordinated. There will be paresis, and that is the cause of of impaired articulation of words. What you call dysarthria. Two, have aphasia. Aphasia, aphasia is a, a disorder. In a, which involves inability to understand spoken words or written speech, or inability in expressing the spoken or written speech in the absence of mental confusion or mental defect. So recall we have speech which you can be understanding speech and uh, expressing speech. That is the speech which occurs in the body. You understand it, then you express. So in a first year, there's inability to understand spoken or written. Because speech we have spoken or written speech. So you fail to understand or you fail to express the spoken or written speech in absence of mental confusion or motor defect or deficit. So depending upon the site of lesion, aphasia is grouped into three. We have sensory, we have motor, and we have global aphasia. So that is it. Depending on the site of lesion, let's continue. We sensory aphasia. When does it occur? The site of lesion in sensory aphasia is a uh, is called the Wernicke's aphasia because the lesion occurs in the Wernicke's area of the cortex. Yes, you know the the auditory or speech centers. We have Wernicke's area, and this is affected. Area twenty two. It is affected. When we have a lesion, because the sensor aphasia, the characteristic features we see are, are below. One, there's difficulty in understanding the meaning of a speech. You, you there's difficulty in understanding. As I said before, we have understanding speech and we have expressing speech. So understanding is difficult. In this, affected individuals are capable of hearing or identifying the written or spoken words. But they do not comprehend the meanings. They don't understand this. Okay. So we have we have motor speech. The motor speech will be intact, and patients talk very fluently. What we call fluent aphasia. However, the speech does not make much sense and is often associated with anomia. What is anomia? Inability to find appropriate word to express a thought. The thought is good, but you fail to find an appropriate word. To express the thought that is anomia. Then we have neologism. This is using or creating new words or new meanings for established words. The words are there, but for you have a different meaning. We have paraphrases. This is production of unintended words or phrases during effort, uh, the effect 
the effort to speak, yeah? To produce unintended words or phrases. You don't intend to, to speak that. Phenomia, neologism, and paraphrases. So these three, they come along with the fluent aphasia, yes? Uh, because we had a lesion in the Wanikis area. That is sensory. Now, in uh, still about sensory, other characteristics will be impairment, <laughs> impairment in reading and writing. Since the patient cannot comprehend, understand the written words, or what we can call word blindness, he or she is unable to read aloud or copy print into writing. So there is impaired reading and writing. The fourth characteristic of sensory aphasia will be conduction aphasia. This is another form of fluent aphasia in which the patient can speak well and there is a good auditory comprehension, but he cannot put the words together. You get? That is conduction. He cannot put the words together. It occurs due to lesions of acute fasciculus or lesions in the auditory cortex area 40. 41, 42. Those are Bradman's area on the cortex. Right. Let's talk about motor phasia. In motor phasia, the site of lesion is the broker's area. Broker's area or broker's motor speech area is area number 44 in the frontal lobe. So in the frontal lobe here, this is the site of lesion. When there is a lesion of Broca's area, what you get is motor aphasia. Let's talk about it. Characteristic features of Broca's aphasia or motor aphasia. One, comprehension of written or spoken speech is good. That is true. You comprehend very well. Uh huh. What happened? But there is a difficulty in speaking. The other way around it was difficult in understanding. So this is difficult in speaking. The affected individual is able to formulate verbal language in his mind but cannot vocalize the response. He can formulate very well but cannot localize, vocalize the response, right? The third, the third characteristic is uh, the speech is non-fluent. The patient utters only a few words with great difficulty. Because of this, motor aphasia is also called non-fluent aphasia or expressive aphasia. Acts much and speaks less, right? And uh, fourth, we have inability to write. This is called agraphia. You cannot write. Yes. Let's talk about global aphasia. This is the third form, depending on the site of lesion. So in global aphasia, what we have is total inability to use language communication. You cannot use language. Global aphasia. Yes. What is the site of lesion? This condition is produced as a result of loss of both Waniki and Broca's area. Both areas, 44 and 22, are damaged or are lost. So you cannot use language as a form of communication. I want to talk, uh, define for you dyslexia. One asked about it, but this is just a broad term applied to inability to read. If you are unable to read, we call it dyslexia. Common causes of aphasia. One, are mostly produced by thrombosis or embolism of blood vessel in dominant hemisphere. So recall we usually have the Wanika in the dominant hemisphere. Yes? So uh, when you have a clot, a clot within the blood vessel within the abdominal hemisphere to affect Wernicke's area and you end up having aphasia. Then we can have lesions in the representation hemisphere which produces impairment of telling a story or joke. Yeah? These people do not know how, <laughs> how to tell a joke. Jokes are rarely appreciated by the fellows. So lesions in the representation hemisphere produces impairment of telling a story or a joke. Don't forget to subscribe for more and better videos. You like, you share for other students and other people to also enjoy the science. David Seven Science Theater loves you so much. Thanks for watching.